Seven. A heads up for another move being made by the industry players here. It's going to cause supply chain issues big time. All the rest of it's been staged all the way from the beginning with the boats going all the way out over the horizon on the west coast, backed up at the ports, all by design. Now, what some are calling a black swan event, an event that is engineered here to affect this whole situation in mass. We have CF Industry Holdings warning that rail shipments of crop nutrients will be reduced to only top agricultural states. And this couldn't come at a worse time here as the Northern Hemisphere is spring planting right now. And if all these farmers don't get the fertilizers that they need, this is gonna affect it big time. Now the world's largest fertilizer company said Union Pacific had hit it with railroad mandated shipping reductions. What timing, right, with all this crap going on? All this should be overwritten, making sure that stuff gets to the places that it needs to get. But we hear no talk of that, do we? This is gonna impact nitrogen fertilizers, uh, urea, urea ammonium nitrate, and shipments that are heading to Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Nebraska, Texas, and California. They're all gonna be affected. This means they're gonna to have to decrease their shipments immediately by a whopping 20% to stay compliant. I'm telling you, this is all part of a massive staged operation. I break this down further on the live streams. Make sure to join me tonight, Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, on DLive and Patriot TV. You'll find links below and hit that subscribe button for more. It's been Dabu7. Peace. Kansas homeowners, if you're an Evergy customer, Hey, Shalom, Akim, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors are to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Peace and blessings and salutation to the hopeful elect. Noise in the gospel, bro. Lifting up the standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, real quick, this is just a lesson. It says Black Swan event, which if we uh, Google Black Swan event, I can look it up real quick. And it's going to basically tell you the black swan event theory of black swan is a metaphor that describes an event that comes as something that's cataclysmic okay something that's pretty much huge or something that's that's bad an omen a, basically a prophecy that nobody's expecting but it will catch people off guard like the common famine the common collapse which many people speak on a collapse but they don't really believe it's going to manifest itself you see what i'm saying like America being destroyed by ICBM nuclear, nuclear missiles. That's considered a black swan event because the masses are not really susceptible to that because we've never experienced global nuclear war on a on a global scale. Now, you could say that atom bombs and so forth like that is a form of nuclear art artillery or hydrogen bombs. But nonetheless, we haven't experienced anything that's beyond uh, capable of wiping off humanity. OK. So it says the black swan theory or the black swan event is a metaphor that describes an event that has come as a surprise, has a major effect, and is often appropriately rationalized after the fact with the benefits of hindsight. The term is based on an ancient saying that presumed black swans did not exist, saying that it became reinterpreted to teach a different lesson with the first European encounter with them, hence the black plague, etc. Now, the Bible speaks of full of black uh, swan events, man. You know, because it says here, uh, Black Swan event is an event in human history that was unprecedented and unexpected at the point in time it occurred. However, after evaluating the surrounding context, domain experts and in some cases, even laymen can usually conclude it was bound to happen like an economic collapse. That's bound to happen. All right. That's bound to happen because it's in the scriptures. The MOTB is bound to happen. Why? Because it's prophesied in the Holy Scriptures. All right. Salvation, the chariots popping up. It's bound to happen because it's prophesied in the scriptures, man. OK, now he was going into all these derailments, which derailments could take sometimes days, hours or weeks to clean up. Because actually this boomerang I work with, he's actually work for a railroad company uh, on a sales floor. And um, he used to have to go out and analyze and give appraisals on derailments, man. And he says sometimes he about a town for two, three weeks at a time. Because that job required him to travel within certain provinces of his domain. Okay. 
So sometimes when you see in those cars and stuff like that stuck on the tracks, that could possibly be the train dock in there, or that could be a derailment, it could be an investigation, anything. But derailment costs a million dollars an hour. I believe it's a million dollars an hour a minute. I think you know he said, I think he said that railroad lose up to a million dollars an hour if they don't hurry up and clean up that derailment. And what is another way to bankrupt or to drive up global inflation is to stage these derailments, man. Because they're experience, expensive because you got to look at the type of cargo, the freight, the time frame that they have to get these goods to these particular stores or particular docks and so forth like that. So it makes sense that if they're deliberately stopping these trains and causing derailments and they're losing a million dollars on an hour or if it's a minute or whatever, it makes sense that the price of food is going to go up because one of the brothers in the camp did a video, I believe yesterday or the day before yesterday about walmart showing prices of inflation okay and i was reading an article about a few weeks ago kind of skimming through it that walmart was doing what they can to keep their prices stable because i mean i won't say they self-sustain but in many ways they are you know sam walton incorporation you know that that devil he's juiced in but anyway it says a fertilizer supply of shock is imminent to us or for us farmers as CF Industries Holdings Incorporation warned Thursday, it says that uh, that rail shipments of crop nutrients will be reduced to top agriculture states, which couldn't come at a worse time as the northern hemisphere spring planting season is under the way. It says the world's largest fertilizer company said Union Pacific had hit it with the railroad mandate shipping reductions that will impact nitrogen fertilizers such as area and uh, uh, urea and urea ammonia nitrate shipments to iowa illinois kansas nebraska texas and california it says union pacific told cf industries without advance notice to reduce the volume of private cars on as a railroad immediately it says this means cf industries had to decrease shipments by a whopping 20 percent to stay compliant okay so right now that's a form of things going up inflation okay because hey when the price of goods go up which they already are but when things start to skyrocket out of place and beef becomes 200 dollars a pound bread becomes a hundred dollars a loaf eggs becomes 150 bucks a, a a carton milk 89 bucks cheese 75 dollars <laughs> you know what i'm saying salt 50 bucks sugar 45 dollars man beans and 30 40 50 bucks man turkey 120 bucks <laughs> lamb a thousand dollars you people shit pork ribs <laughs> 150 bucks you jakes are going to lose it man and not only you jakes you edomites are gonna lose it because what's happening this is the most high breaking the staff of bread in this society man and deservedly so because you people like i always say you people are hell-bent on your appetites of your bread and circus man you know so call all your hell by shimmy how was shy man all right. So it says the timing of this action by Union Pacific could not come at a worse time for farmers, said Tony Will, president and chief executive officer for CF Industries. But, yeah, Tony Will, you ain't getting hit by it because it's not coming out of your pocket because you are already paid off. You know, you already got your money. So you care less about what happens to the people. But not only, not only will fertilizer be delayed by these shipping restrictions, but additional fertilizers needed to complete spring applications may be unable to reach farmers at all. Which, you know, we went into the whole agriculture and, and, and uh, dairy farming. Dairy farmers don't make any money for real. You know, off milk, they don't have the produce. You know, cows are being euthanized. They're being shot up with particular hormones. There's no money in dairy farming anymore. It's causing more to keep the farming open than to produce. So the best bet is to just shut it all down. You know, dairy farmers, wheat farming, all these things are getting ready to uh, have a global effect on this economy. You know, like I said, man, we could very well see a collapse this year lord's will and we are already in a collapse but i mean with the whole system finally crashing down or businesses are shutting down left and right because they're doing things in small increments gradualism as we like to call it they're doing it in small pockets so you may see a macy's close down here and there and that may not be a big deal but if you pay attention to the the stores that closed since 2018 you probably had over 1500 stores that closed within the last three or four years probably more than that you know what I'm saying? And um, it don't hurt to do a Google or duck, duck, go search or whatever, you know, search engine you use. It doesn't hurt to really research that information. But nonetheless, this shit is coming to a halt and fast. OK, 
But it says by placing this arbitrary restriction on just a handful of shippers, Union Pacific is jeopardizing farmers, harvesting and increasing the cost of food for consumers. So it says the move is particularly problematic for the Midwest, hence the breadbasket of the world. What are the chances? Illinois, Ohio, Kansas, Missouri, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, what's the other state? Uh, not Arkansas, no. But uh, Indiana, you know, those are considered the Midwest. You know, it's a lot of farming and agriculture that's done, a lot of corn farming and so forth out in this area because when you come out to the midwest and you're traveling on different interstates it's 90 percent farmland you see big acres of land but it says uh for the midwest where 90 percent of corn and 80 percent of soil beans soybeans are produced in the u.s it says the region is a critical node in the global food system and a tightening of the fertilizer supply will only drive up food prices by shrinking harvest so they got to make money it says farmers have been pressured by Record high fertilizer and diesel costs. Okay. And uh this is just a, a, a chart for any brothers, you know, to understand graph readings and charts and so forth. Um, this pretty much tells you the North American fertilizer index and they give you an uh, increase since 2003. How and notice it hit a peak in 2007 and 2008, and that's when we were we were in the verge of the economic collapse, the subprime banking, the housing mortgage, everything collapsed in those years. So it went up, okay, and then it was kind of gradually going up and down over the years but we haven't seen this worse of a hike since 2007 to 2008 but here you go to 2021 to 2022 this is at an all-time high man so we're in a worse case than what we were in 2008 man all right so the most high is getting ready to really do something to this place man all right so what i did i typed in the staff of bread in king james bible in leviticus 26 and 26 it says when i have broken the staff of your bread <laughs> OK, it says 10 women should bake your bread in one oven. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, the food, the commodities, things are going to be scarce like the coming famine. And this is all to orchestrate a coming famine. OK, because they were talking about potentially in 90 days or potentially if the global supply markets collapse today, we will only have 90 days supply of food worldwide. Now, you do the math on that. Because the average household, you're supposed to have at least two weeks of food supply, okay? But the average household may have a day or two, maybe three. But the average supermarket only carries a two or three day supply of food. So imagine 90 days for the entire world. The world can go hungry in literally three months. We're in April, May, June, July. It broke down today at this time by, what is this? May, June, by July, mid-July, this world will see a famine like no other. The world will go hungry. So just imagine what type of hell gonna break loose out here. It's gonna be bad, man. It says ten women should break your bed in one oven, and they should deliver it to you. The bread again by weight, and you should eat it and not be satisfied, right? Because, like I said, supply and demand. Okay, the supply for it is high. Well, the de demand for it is high, but the supply is very low. Okay, like notice when you go in certain stores now, you're getting less proportions, man. Like I went to this uh this little restaurant. I'm going to say about two weeks ago when I got off work and I may just go there because it's good protein. Uh, you got Hawaiian brothers, but not that. But it's a restaurant. Uh, they sell like Mediterranean food. And I picked up some lamb nachos, you know, to go. And uh, shit was good, but they were 12 bucks, man. Inflation. But that particular meal used to be like eight bucks, nine bucks, man. Because that's what it's worth. It's not worth to a lot. Yeah, they give you a good portion but it ain't worth really 12 bucks, if you know what I mean. Same thing with chicken wings. Chicken wings now, you go to any restaurant, man, chicken wings, you ain't getting them for no less than 16 bucks for eight pieces. Back in the day, an eight-piece wing would have cost you six, five ninety-nine, six ninety-nine. You know, and this was just two, three years ago. Now everybody's driving their prices up because hey, shit is getting ready to collapse. And in order for the markets and a business to remain some type of realm to make some type of money, they gotta raise the, the, the price margin to bring in the profits, man. You see? So this system is getting ready to crash, man. So it says, your bread again by weight and ye should eat it and not be satisfied. All right? So call all your how about Shimi Hamashad. This place is done, okay? Psalms 105 and 16. This is a good one. It says here, Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land and he broke the whole staff of bread. This is going into the famine of Egypt. It says the whole staff, meaning that Egypt from Goshen, well, Goshen, we had light in our provinces, the Israelites, we were straight. But nonetheless, the whole region felt that famine. They felt that economic collapse. 
And all Americans going to feel that in due time. OK, and I'm hoping it's soon because we got a blood moon, I believe, next week. OK, but it says here he set a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. But the point was, moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread, man. OK, so this economic collapse is going to be detriment, man. It's going to be that bad and it's going to get that bad to the point. They're going to have to bring martial law out here. Because these people are going to be losing their minds, man. Murdering, killing, bartering, selling women into slavery, selling kids, man. You know, eating human flesh. It's going to be a it's going to be a shit show. And if you ain't got the spirit of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, your ass is through. Okay? So this is Isaiah 3 and 1. It says, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and Ju Judah the stay and the staff. It's locking my allergies bothering me. But it says, From Jerusalem and from Judah, the stay and the staff. The whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So your water supplies, you know, when they shut down your systems, your sanitation systems, man, you set down your sub pumps, you know, your sanitation, your storm water systems. When they shut all these things down, all that wastewater is going to bag up in people's houses because we don't have the pump pumping that shit out to a plant to treat it, to pump it back in the river. This is going to bag back up. So you people are taking shits in the commode or the toilet, you know, doing an outward temptation and so forth. Hey, man, this is going to bag back. It's going to be a nightmare, man. OK, it's going to be a total nightmare. OK, Ezekiel 4 and 16. It says, more of you said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem and they should eat bread by weight and with care. Right. Because it ain't going to just be no careless eating. That's when you people going to go on your dietary plan that day. All you people that want to get on a keto diet. Hey, you're going to get on it in that day because, hey, you ain't going to have nothing to eat but your kids and each other because cannibalism is coming back in a, in a magnificent way. It says, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem and they should eat bread by weight and with care and they should drink water by measure and with astonishment because they're going to be like, wow, this is different. We ain't never used to have to eat like this. I mean, you go to the store and buy 50, 60 cases of water. But sooner or later, when shit get bad, they're going to start limiting the amount of water you can buy. You, it's only one case per family. That's called rationing, man. Okay? And you people don't understand that that's coming right here to Babylon. But you're too proud because you're too, uh, uh, fush, you're too focused on your daily lives and going to work, running this pinwheel rat race, man, that you ain't getting nowhere. You know, it's basically for none. It's all vanity. You wake up in the morning just to do the same thing, to take shit from somebody above you that's making profit. It's stupid, man. Okay? And it says, and when I should send upon them evil arrows, Ezekiel 5 and 16, a famine, evil arrows of famine, okay? Evil, bad times. Show you that, man, the Most High is doing this, okay? And when the Lord put emphasis on words, take heed. Evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you. Ooh, and I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. This shit is getting ready to get out of hand. And the Most High said it too many times, man. He's repeating it. So what happens when you jakes, you got $1,000 in food stamps, but you can't spend it. You can't go buy that. And right now, they got an info meal shortage, man. Which you women should be breastfeeding anyway. You ain't supposed to be putting your children on formula and all that madness. You should be breastfeeding, man. But hey, what do you do? You go to the store, you spend your wick tokens on info meal, on poison. But it's a shortage on that. So you black women, you are bugging out now. What about shortage on cow's milk? You know, corn, beans. We know how you like your oodles and noodles. All that stuff getting ready to be taken from you, man. A pack of noodles going to cost your ass 75 bucks. For a punk ass pack of uh, oodles and noodles that barely fills you up, man. Full of starch and seasoning and all that stuff. You know, we grew up on that, man. All right. Uh, Ezekiel 14 and 13. It says, son of man, when the land sinned against me by trespassing grievously, which this land did, America did, by stealing the Israelite, the Negro, Latino, Native American, our people in slavery, okay, the abominations, the fact that a four-year-old can get the rod chopped off and want to identify with something they have no idea, and then when they get 13, 14, now they want to contemplate suicide because now they've done something that's against nature. And that's a curriculum and a doctrine that's being pushed on our children in school, man. They pushing that. Uh, come on, uh, eleven year old tell you that they want to identify with the alphabet community. Come on, man. That's being taught to those kids. That's indoctrination. And it says the land is sent against me by trespassing grievously. 
Then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off men and beasts from it. <laughs> so you people, man, y'all ass is in trouble, man. And I say y'all because us, Lord's will, the Lord has mercy on us. We going to be straight because the scripture say in famine, we should be satisfied. OK, we should have abundant because it, there will be food out here. Just the fact that you ain't going to be able to get to it unless you get the karagma. All right. And even if you do get the karagma, it ain't no guarantee you're going to get the food because shit going to be happening all over the world. And when the karagma is fully implemented, you better believe that those nuclear missiles are going to fly right out there, man. OK, and don't get simple. Say, oh, I thought you said when the karagma comes, the missiles are going to come the same day. No, I didn't say that. OK, I said fly right out there. That can be months, weeks. A year, we don't know, but nonetheless, when that MOTB is established, that's when the Most High is going to really send this place down. That's when it's done. That's why he's dragging his feet. Come on with the famine. Come on with the collapse. Bring the, you know what, so the missiles can fly, man. How much longer we got to wait? Come on, man. Let's get the show on and popping. Let's get the hell up out of here. I'm tired of this place, man. All right. The book of uh, Second Andrew 6, and I'm going to start at verses... 22 it says and suddenly shall the song places appear unsung and the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty the stores man your stores are going to be found empty right now stores are getting empty luckily they still have some type of supply chain going on but hey it's causing those drivers extra money and gas and the companies they're getting squeezed for every penny so they gotta raise the prices in order to pay their workers man and keep the lights on and it says, and a trumpet should give a sound, which when every man hear it, they should suddenly be afraid. And at that time, shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those things that dwell therein, and the springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they should not run. Okay? So, hey, all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders of the GMS, and blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Shalom and a Baba Ball.